the people have a little dog and the dog has very kindly chewed the corner out. I'm going to see how all of this turns out on the mend first and then decide what to do here. I've moved the zip all the way to the back here. Now I can see more or less what is going on. This is not good. I'm going to take this part out and then I'm going to see what I can do about this. But I'm going to think of it in parts, not all of it at the same time. So I'm looking on this side, there's the rip where the dog has chewed it, but there's barely any seam allowance at all on here. So I'm not surprised, well, it might have been already giving, I don't know, that's terrible. Anyway, I'm just going to finish pulling this out so I can open that seam up. I've already opened that and I'm going to open this side too. It'll just take me a little minute to get all of this open. I'm going to undo some of this zip. I'm going to have to remove the whole zip anyway. Okay, so I've got this little corner to sort out first. Let's see if I've got any fabric that would do that. The only fabric that I've got that is a similar weight. Now this is a denim and this is a cotton. It's actually a drop cloth, but I don't need very much. I only need a little bit to go on the end there and possibly for this little corner here. So not very much. A bit gutted that I'm having to cut up one of my drop cloths. But anyway, you know, sometimes other people's things take priority to my own. I'm going to cut my little piece out here. I'll be a little bit generous there and up. I've just pressed this side out which has the big hole in it and I'm curious as to what is going on with this side. So if I line that up here, it doesn't quite work. If I line it up there it's too short and it's not wide enough there. It should match this side on down which is why it's not level. This is not easy. <laughs> OMG, what to do, what to do. What I've done is I've folded back along this line here and ironed it so that I now have a sew line. It's a little bit close here, but it's going to go into a seam and it's close here, but not so close. It's just under a quarter of an inch, but I think with the size of my stitching, it will be fine. And I'll pop that there like that fold it over and I'm going to sew along that line so I'm going to start just where the seam would be I'm going to go forward and back and then all the way across if it wobbles slightly it's not going to be a great problem push that forward I don't want to stretch it up I want to keep it square on and at the back here forward and back where my stitching is, I am just going to cut a little way from there, giving me just under a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I've cut all the crack off basically. And now that's my new seam. I'm going to top stitch that. Now that will keep that set. Let's fold that like that so it's in line with the outside edge here. I'm just going to pull back this a little bit further and I'm going to cut at least an inch off like that. Now having done that, I'm going to line everything up like this. The outside seams all together and all the way to the end. Reverse. I'm going to cut along here in a straight line to there and then up. Now I've pressed this back and that back and I'm going to cut in towards the corner but not quite there there and there so it should open up nicely so I've got little clips and pop this here level with the bottom and I'm actually going to pin it in place I think that's the best thing to do because I don't want it really moving the bottom of there is in line with the bottom there and the side of there is more or less in line with the side of here so hopefully that looks even. Put a pin in here to hold it like that. I don't think I need to do anything with that. I think that's nice and set. Pop this under here like that and sew towards the top. Got a needle here. I'm going to push that under like that. I'm going to hold it as I sew up towards there. Put my needle down, lift the foot and twist everything and then sew towards this one here. Remove that and carry on to the end. That's nicely in and then I can cut back here because I don't need all of that on the back of there. So now I'm going to see where I'm going to put the zip. If I hold this at the top here and stretch it down you can see that it is really quite off. One side is actually slightly wider than the other. It's 
it's just a mess. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this back here to match because as in this corner, it goes down and across and it's now even. So that will make quite a nice section compared to how it was. It's still going to be wonky, but at least I can straighten this down here, make the front and the back even. I'll just do that as I go across and I'll make my way across to the other side. I can't believe how wonky all of this is. I'm just blown away by it. Never mind. That will do. That's straighter than it was. I did iron the fold out for the zipping. I'm going to put some more zipping in and I might alter it because I like to have it a little bit wider than they had. Mainly because in some areas it was only just kept in. So I'm going to put a nice generous half inch there. Lay my zip down and make my way along to the other side. And I'll just fold that in as I go. I'm going to keep it as even as I possibly can. To the end, pull it out and I'm going to allow it about half an inch outside like that. I've allowed that amount on the other side too. I'm just going to cut it off. I've lined everything up and this comes to about here. I'm going to put a pin on that side like that so I can see where it goes and then I'm going to just undo this side because I can't sew the second side on if it's closed up. Undo that all the way to the end and I'm going to reset. If I cut that back a bit I'll be able to see where everything goes. So I've got four teeth on that end. If I put that like that across there it will go into place exactly where I want it. So it's now in place. I'm just going to pop pin this way so I can line it up underneath the zipper foot. Pull the pin out, put my finger here to just keep it in place. I'm going to roll the fabric into a better position with the teeth along the fold of there. Bring it in just a little bit and then sew. And again I'm going to just fold that over and I'm going to keep the teeth a little way back from the fold as it gets sewn in. And I will adjust this along here as I go and keep it as even as possible till I get to the other end. Now I've got to put the zip on but I actually have to put the zip on twice. Pop that there. I have to have it facing the other way. I cannot put this on facing me. So let's see how well I get this. At the moment it really doesn't matter which side's on top. I prefer it that it's this side than the other. I'm not going to worry about one tooth being different. There's not really very much room to get your fingers around the side here. Make sure that the tab is down otherwise it will stop it moving and just wriggle it until you think you have everything where you need it. Maybe that's it. Let's see. I've got it and it's just one tooth ahead so that's fine. I'm going to pull that down and off the other end like that and then it's all zipped up together. I'm thinking I might go from this end down. So the top tooth is on this side. Unzip some of that like that and reposition this on here remembering that one tooth has to be ahead on this side and again push it until it catches and then on down and do that a little bit more. These are such a bind sometimes. I managed to get it and I'm going to just draw that down a little bit like that so that both ends are sealed. That's very important for when you put the pieces across the side there. I want to put these corners back in. I need a seam of the piping to be on the center of my zip. So I'm going to do that. Now because I am going to go from this side I'm going to make sure that my three layers of the seam are there, the piping's facing the other side and so is that little piece of seam there. Should mean everything goes over correctly. Start with forward and back. I'm going to try to use the original seam line actually. I think that'll be, no, I think that'll work. I've got a piece of fabric here which I'm going to pop underneath here across the top of the teeth. So the needle's down, I'll bring the foot up, push that underneath like that to my needle, pop that down. I didn't want it walking forward while I was sewing so that's why I put it in afterwards. And I'm going to go forward and backwards of the zip teeth right to the end and then forward and back. If I feel like I need to go back over here then I will but I think that will work as a stopper. If you put 
fabric on both sides and stitch it in it's a little bit stronger than if you just do one side so I've straightened this one out I've got my piping and my zip together pipings facing this way because I'm going to be sewing it from that side and then when I look at it the original pleat is here which I don't want which means that this pleat goes around the side as well and I look at it the sewing for here goes into here and the sewing for this one goes in a curve which I don't want either so let's see what we've got if I can straighten it out I could do two inches and two inches what's this one mm, slightly wonky that's just over two inches either side so I'll pull that back slightly and put it there it's basically the same width as the other one and because if this is wonky I am going to put a pin in here by the zip and across check on the other side see that doesn't even cover it my pin is here and that will do exactly what the other one did which is hardly keep that in so oh what a bind I wonder if I can pull that back slightly if I pull it back slightly this is the thing when you're working on something that's already being done it's a little bit more awkward and it's always hard to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear but anyway we'll see what we can do come in here pinch that all together that's more or less in place but I'm gonna have to be really careful coming across because I don't want to miss that point where the piping is or we're in trouble so I'm gonna pop that back in there double check again yeah that's pulled it in it should catch everything down that's where I need it to go on the back side if I just want that two inches I'm gonna measure it and go in as straight a line as I can that means I need to start sewing. It doesn't want to twist. There we go. The original corner is here, which is a little bit over, but that'll be fine. Twist it so it aims for where I need to go across here. I'm going to start sewing forward and back. Aim to that pin and stop. Pull the pin out. Here's my piece of fabric that I'm going to put under. So I'm going to pop that, lift the foot up and push that under. There we go. Push that under like that right to the needle and I'm coming into here should hold all of that down and into place forward over the zip and then back forward again push everything where you want it and I'm aiming towards there so it should go over everything and look at it make sure everything's where it needs to be oh yeah it's taken everything in there's my piping all of that's in there that's gone over the end there brilliant I'll just cut that back slightly so it looks more even not that anybody's going to notice now I'll fill it up with that awful stuff there we go perfect so this is the patches it's odd because the smallest one ended up being the biggest patch and the largest patch ended up being the smallest and that was mainly because this side was longer than the other and I was able to cut it back but I think they'll be pleased with that that should last a bit longer <laughs> 